finally, after a long haul, you guys are going to finally get to see machining the motor pulley. Um, also, interesting, whoever designed this thing did a good job if you want to mount it horizontally. If you want to mount it vertically like this, there's no way you can do it. So you'll see in the video um, how I clamped it, but I had to machine a little piece that goes underneath it and luckily it does fit the grooves in the T-slots to keep it straight and aligned. So um, I got to make another one though because the part is that it sticks up above the table so when you clamp it you tilt the entire uh, rotary table. So I got to make a longer one with screws to keep it from tilting. In the video I had the clamps on the front and I had a C-clamp on the back to keep it from tilting. Um, so the next step though, next hurdle, is I did the um, intermediate pulley off camera, but now I'm having a hard time trying to figure out how to broach it because the broach doesn't go in a 10 millimeter hole. So Stephen with Shark River, I'll put a link to his channel if you haven't heard of it in the description has been emailing me and we've been going back and forth with videos and a whole bunch of stuff trying to come up with a solution which I think I'll have tomorrow but we'll see so it's been great and fun and so on with the show there it is I think the last hurdle is going to be how to clamp it down which I'm going to use just one one T-nut on the front here <laughs> But, wow, <laughs> four holes drilled. There's not really enough of room to countersink them like this. Um, they are pretty much so dead center. Everything came out nice. Really like this guy. Um, I already took the test indicator off. I used the best test. I've got it within one thou. Um, not easy to do it with these two screws loose trying to bang it around but not. so I tighten these guys up and then I just use these three barely snugging them use the hammer tap it around so I kind of got it within a thou and I just realized since it takes that much to get it straight I'm not taking it apart and I can't put it in the drawer this was originally in one of the drawers over on the other side of the shop uh other thing is it's a pain i mean i've spun this thing a million times so it's not going to fail on me but you got to spin it spin it spin it you know if, what was it four times to get five degrees <laughs> come on um i had to redo the t two t nuts so they were too far down i'd spin and all of a sudden it hit something it was jamming on this guy so the t nuts are now thinner and because they're thinner when you put them in there you got to use the ruler to hold them up so the screws engage i could probably use longer screws eventually i'll make two more t-nuts and pick up some longer screws so that's done uh it's kind of ready to go on the mill and actually make a finally make a timing pulley huh tighten that guy back up he goes back in the drawer so I'm kind of set <laughs> after all of that weeks worth of fixing this do that boy that's a beast hanging out too look at that ah that hangs way out all right fly cutters ready to go and my blanks ready to go here we go yeah sorry uh <laughs> I just put the test indicator away. I wanted to check to see the run out on this one more time. For some reason it was off by five thou. So I had to loosen the three screws and bang on it and I got it down to a thou. So it's ready to go and be cut. Um, you know, you can't see, I had to make a steel bar on the bottom to try to get this thing mounted. I played with it for hours. I don't know how they intended anybody to clamp this thing. Um, I can probably move the camera here. There, so you can see down in there. 
Uh, I don't think you can get it. There it is. All right. So there's the clamps. There's a steel bar in the T-slot. And it's clamping down on the top of that bar to hold it in place. So eventually I need to do some other things to improve that bar. I mean, longer and um, put a screw in it to set depths and things like that. So, all right, let me get us get it set up for cutting now. All right, for vertical, all you can do is just take this guy and with a magnifying glass guess as to where the center is. Uh, I don't think it matters too much for a few thousands being off. And I just took Y in until I just dusted this thing. So according to the print, I need to go in 39 thousandths. So I'm gonna go in right now, uh, just for the heck of it. Slight scratch, three thousandths. Let's see what happens, huh? Uh, not much light for me to see. There it is, it's hitting it. Hmm? Okay. So I double check spreadsheet, four and four is supposed to do it. So I gotta stand up to do this. Alright, so one, two, three, we moved it. Four and four. Yep, it's back on there. Okay, so now you move that forward. Do it again, all right? This will be interesting here. I'll probably do more off camera and bring you back when I'm done with 360. So, one, two, three, four, and four. That's the next spot, right? One, two, three, four, ooh, I'm off. All right, all right, back up. Uh, go back to the beginning. Oh, I can't. Shoot, why am I off, huh? That was the second cut. Let me take, do this off camera. There it is. Uh, first 360 degree, 4 thousandths depth of cut. It looks perfect. And the cutter, I went from the back with a magnifying glass. It's right on the money for the very first cut that we made. So my spreadsheet's right. The math is right. The four revolutions and four holes is right. I just need to do, go in, what, 39 thousandths. Back this up, I can probably go in another four. The cutter looks good. The cuts look beautiful, they're nice. Unlock Y, go to eight thousandths. Uh, yeah, eight. So it takes a while to do this, but uh, it's getting there, so uh, I guess I'll do one. No, I did one swipe, but <laughs> So turn it back on and all the way up. RPM is almost at max. What is it? When I, RPM is come on, come on, 1680. So yeah, I'm in position for this cut. Actually, I want to go stop it and go in the back and make sure. It looked like it was right on the friggin' money, so I'm sure it is. Let me double check it right now. Magnifying glass and a flashlight. Here's the flashlight. So I gotta go way back here. Oh, I'm off. Uh, Alright, so this has gotta come around. And I gotta get it closer than that to see it there. Ah, stool's in the way. And it cut right on it. Beautiful, right on it. Okay, so I've got finally, after I don't know how long, successful cutting. So do the rest of it off camera, bring you back when I'm 
I actually I can put the um, belge on here right now and it should match right up. So I'll put the mic down. And here's the belt. And there's no room with this camera here for me to do any of this stuff. But uh-huh. If I can get it on there. How can I tell? Hey. Yeah, it's lying. It's landing. I need the magnifying glass. I gotta do this off camera, guys. Guess I gotta keep the camera further back. I can probably kill this light. But the spring in this thing needs to be weaker. This is hard to pull. All right, one, two, three, four, and four, and move it. Because it occasionally I accidentally hit these fingers and move them, and I'm like, oh no. Decided to start taking more aggressive cuts. What do you do? Five thousands, right? I'm halfway there, fifteen. And I said, what, thirty-four or something like that. Putting the belt on there. Look, the line's right up. One, two, three, four, and four, and move it. Keep forgetting to move this thing. So you got to get into a regular routine here. Oh, that sounded deeper, but no. Uh, hard to tell when you've actually done 360. I don't know how many turns I've got to do, but. Alright, one, two, three, four, and four. I think I just now hit it. Well, didn't move it far. So that's kind of it. It was a little bit boring, but it's cool when you finally see this pulley done. One, two, three, four, and four, and move it. All right, so I'll wind up just doing the rest of this off camera. But a lot of work just to be able to do this and make that head or table work that is one completely different looking gear than theirs but their teeth go way deep it the belt fits it perfectly I can see um, gaps under each tooth stress point is correct so I think I'm done that is crazy looking huh so the cuts look good. The edges of the teeth are nice and perfectly smooth. It's beautiful. So there shouldn't be any wear. I could take another pass, a 1,000th cut. But yeah, I'm looking at the sides of these things and it's perfect. The bottom is pretty good. To, uh, bottom's a little bumpy, but the sides are what counts. They have to be smooth so they don't really uh, wear out the belt so the teeth on the belt uh, <laughs> actually one two uh, I'd spin it around the other way this back screw at one point flew out scared me to death dangerous hit the side of the lathe to the right of the mill and was landing on, um, on the counter so I think I'm done but like I said experience says let it be think about it before you take it out because once you take it out you're not getting it back so uh, cool let me try this without the light maybe so you guys can kind of see it <laughs> and then the cutter is this guy homemade and it matches the V or the slope on the belt perfectly I couldn't ask for something better so this guy is ready to go it's been broached it's been reamed uh, oh, I just need to make the face sides for it. And I think, yeah, I need to do the width, too. I got to double check that. So it's like almost ready to just go on the machine. Trying to get the camera in close so you can see this guy. Completely different looking gear. And it fits to a T. Telemarketer. Ah, I can get it on there. There. 
I mean, it's, it doesn't get better than that. This thing is perfect. So, I do have, for the new gear, this thing is actually fraction shorter. I could throw this on the motor right now. Because the width, I mean, it's got quite a bit of width left to it. So, uh, there's T. Doesn't come out to me any better than that. I, I love it. I loved how it came out. A lot of work to get here. Um, this guy, I had put a taper, slight taper on it, and the idea was, I've got the holes here, I was going to drill through here, countersink it to death, so these guys are way down below, I could put this back in the lathe and take this whole face back, but that would only give me one side rather than two, I'd have to do the same kind of thing for this side, so... I think I'm going to just try putting it on the machine.